Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video series, we'll be covering all the rules you need for Warcry. I'll be using the Warcry Catacomb set throughout the video series, and I'll also be including some optional extras like the dice set and the battle plan cards. We'll use the core book and the Catacombs book as our reference and guide, and I'll also include any updates that were given by Games Workshop in their most recent errata. Everything you need to play Warcry is included in the Catacombs box set and the rules are quick and easy to learn so you'll be up and playing in no time. This series will give you all the rules you need to play a battle but in the future I'll make additional videos for beasts and thralls, monsters and mercenaries, campaigns, open play, narrative play, fated quests and all the other cool and fun aspects of the game. As I learned the rules myself I thought it'd be cool to share them in a video series before we move on to the battle reports. I'm really excited to be producing these regular battle reports coming really soon and we'll see all the different warbands competing with each other on the battlefield. I really hope you find these videos helpful and it'll be great if you can join in in the comments section below. It'll be great to hear your thoughts and please add any corrections or additions as we work our way through the video series together. Okay, let's get started with part one where we'll go through an introduction to the core rules and then look at the tools and tokens you need to get started with a Warcry battle. The following rules explain how to play a game of Warcry, taking you through every step of fighting a brutal battle within the blood-soaked lands of the Eight Points. In its essence, Warcry is a tabletop skirmish game played between two or more players, although you can also play it solo. Each game of Warcry is referred to as a battle, and in that battle, each player will control a group of miniatures that are pitched against their opponents. Each group of miniatures is referred to as a warband, and that warband will consist of a number of miniatures that will each be referred to as a fighter. In each Warcry battle, the goal will be different. Sometimes you'll need to take down your opponent's fighters, other times you might need to hold a key location on the battlefield or secure a valuable artefact. Each battle will take place on a flat surface which is called the battlefield and this battlefield can be populated with one or more terrain features. The catacomb set comes with a double sided board letting you play in the wastes of the eight points and also taking your battles underground in the dungeons beneath the lands of chaos. The dungeon side of the board is laid out in a grid and each square is one inch by one inch in size. You can use any flat surface as your battlefield and even create your own terrain if you wanted to, but the size to stick to is 30 inches by 22 inches for a Warcry battlefield. The terrain will include pieces so that you can play above ground and also pieces you can use in the dungeons below. These will include doorways, bridges, steps, buildings, ruins and even weapon stash. The terrain can play a big part in Warcry and some people have referred to it as a third player on the battlefield. Before you fight a battle you're going to need a few tools and these are called the tools of war. You'll need a ruler and also some dice and these are included in the Warcry Catacombs box. You can also use a measuring tape, but the flexible, transparent rulers work really well for measuring the distances on the battlefield in Warcry. The Warcry Catacombs box is going to give you 18 six-sided dice. This is certainly enough to play the game, but I'd recommend picking up some extra six-sided dice, especially if you don't want to share with your opponent. Some rules will ask you to roll a d3, and if this is the case, just roll a regular six-sided dice and then halve the total, always rounding up. With so much terrain on the board, I'd recommend using some kind of dice tray for your dice rolls. I use a box insert from one of the Warcry warbands, and I put some green card in the bottom, and this works really well. Tokens play a big part if Warcry and the Catacomb set comes with a set of tokens and markers that will help you keep track of the battle. Tokens can be placed on the battlefield or on a fighter card. Some of them, like the damage tokens, have a pointed edge to indicate which fighter they refer to. 
if placed next to multiple fighters. When you've got two or three fighters engaged and taking damage points, putting these damage tokens on the battlefield usually isn't a problem. But when you start to get more than three fighters all together in a small area, then these damage tokens can be quite confusing and start to get in the way. This is where it's a good idea to put them on the fighter cards and use the divider cards that we'll go through later on. The first token is the activation token and this is used once the fighter has been activated and used up all their actions. This activation token is placed next to the miniature on the tabletop or on the fighter card. This token's good to be placed next to the miniature on the battlefield so that both players can see which fighters have been activated at a glance. On the reverse of each activation token is a weight token and we'll go into the detail about what this means later on. But we do place this exactly the same way either next to the miniature on the battlefield or on the fighter card. Next we've got the objective markers and these will be used when we set up the battles later on. If you flip over the objective markers, you'll see that each one has a different treasure token rune mark. The battle plan and victory cards will tell you when to use treasure tokens and where to place them on the battlefield. Next, we've got our damage tokens and you get two different kinds. One has one and three on each side and one has five and 10 on each side. And these are used to keep track of all your wounds and damage that you take. Just as we talked about earlier, place these damage tokens either next to the miniature on the battlefield or on top of the fighter card. You might find it easier to use a 10 sided or 20 sided dice, especially for some of the fighters that have got a high number of wounds, but that's up to you. You'll also have two sets of special tokens and there'll be five in each set. These special tokens don't relate to any specific rule, but the number on each can be used to help the players to remember any rule that may come into play, such as a lasting bonus to a friendly fighter. Our final token is called the initiative token, and this is simply used to remind players whose turn it is. I hope you found this video helpful. Please join in and comment below with any thoughts or additions you'd like to make. It'd be great to hear from you. The next video in the series will play right after this one in the playlist and I'll also put links in the description below to every video in the series. Thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more Warcry content like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. <laughs>